Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda a Link to the Past and uh, yeah we got a bit of this dungeon to do la uh, yet. Uh, a few more puzzles. We've got to um, light up all of these uh, lamps here. Not too bad. If you pick the right direction, you know. And it just drops you back to the uh, floor below you if you make a mistake. So it's not like it really resets your position or resets your schedule a whole lot there. I don't know why I pulled out the hammer here. I guess I was just being bored and silly, but... I guess I felt the hammer would be easier, but... That's easier. Yeah, they have to stick that enemy here just to uh, mess with us. Anyway, so we got this other chest over here, so let's go see what's inside. More bombs. Give us a lot of bombs here. I wonder why. Yeah, I'm sure it's nothing. Ah, this is why they're giving us a lot of bombs. Uh, they got this little puzzle here. Pretty easy, though. And yeah, I made a little bit of a cut there because I made a few mistakes there, but... You know, it's easy enough to get that. You only need, like, maybe a couple of bombs to figure that out. You know, if you're off, you just move a little bit and you put it in the right position. And... Magic here. And another key. I don't know why they gave us the key there. I guess they're just forcing us to go into the middle there. And we got this guy again, so let's see how many hits it takes to get rid of him with our golden sword. And I'm going to do the spin attack, too. Only need really one more. Yep, that's it. Easy, easy, easy. Not much of a challenge. Yeah, looks like a chest just uh, showed up there. We can't really go that way. Whoa, almost fell down there. And if you go over here, you'll see this uh, treasure chest popped back up. And uh, you can go over here, get the treasure chest, and get some rupees. Now there is a hack, or, or a glitch anyways, where you can kind of switch places uh, a little bit with those if you use the hook shop. But I wasn't able to get that to work, so... But I have seen it done in uh, speedruns, of course. Now they got to get this room in here, so let's see what we can do to get rid of these guys. Will this work? Yep. Well, it, it works somewhat. It makes them pretty much easy to, easier to get rid of. But that's kind of a cool thing that Quake does sometimes. So, I just wanted to show that. Didn't think I showed that off yet. Now we go up here. And we get one of these rooms, right? So what are we going to have to deal with next? Yeah, who's going to be our boss enemy in this dungeon? Yep, old Aghanim here. But that's all right. Nothing we can't take care of. The only difference with, it, with this guy is that he's got a new attack. And what you want to do is you want to follow the Aghanim that is not, um, that is not, you know, transparent or translucent. Um, and it's easy to spot. And you can just follow him around and you can sometimes get to, um, get two of the, um, magic balls at him too. Which is pretty good. does take quite a few hits and this is the only way to get rid of them so you know just have to deal with it thankfully our shield can uh, take care of those little magic pellets so yeah so even a secondary attack is nothing and there's so many of those balls floating around that it's easy to get rid of now let's see who's really controlling everything it's our old friend Ganon and um, yeah, we're not done with this game by a long shot. And you might notice that there's probably going to be one more episode after this. Well, maybe not. You didn't notice, but uh, I didn't really mention that this was the end. Um, and it's not because there's some other stuff we're going to show off, too. Uh, but before we go back into that hole, uh, I'm going to get a few extra items or at least one extra item, and show you the uh, Chris Houlihan room. Or at least different ways to get of getting to it. So I'll try to explain that for you. Now, first of all, I'm going to go... Um, sorry about that. Let me use the mirror in the right spot here. 
You'd think I would learn, you know. You would think I would learn, but apparently not. Anyways, let's move over to um, get some magic medicine. Um, I figured I might because I have a tendency to face tank bosses a lot. And uh, knowing my luck, I really don't want to end up uh, having to um, do Ganon's battle all over again. So, might as well get something. Well, let me go ahead and empty out a bottle here. I don't have to do this, but I figured, you know, what not? Why not? So, let me talk about the Chris Houlihan rooms. The best ways to get into them... Well, let me first talk about what the Chris Houlihan room is. It's basically a failsafe so that if, for whatever reason, something kind of glitches in the game, um, and for whatever reason your XY position is in the wrong place or is overwritten or something like that, what happens is that uh, you go into a dungeon or fall into a hole, and the Chris Houlihan room is used instead of that of wherever you would be normally. So it's kind of like a clever way of uh, hiding a glitch so that the game doesn't glitch out on you. So it traps a, a glitch, I don't know how um, they expected anybody to discover this, because I think it was discovered in the mid-90s when emulators were starting to come out. And um, the only way it was found was... Um, you know, through emulators and actually hacking the ROM itself. And I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that was how it was discovered. And I could be wrong on how um, how it works, because um, I'm doing this from memory, talking about it from memory. So if I'm wrong, just correct me. Uh, but there's different ways to get there. The first way you want to kind of get up there is you start around the sanctuary. So I'm going to walk over there. Um, one uh, thing that you need for the Chris Hulan room is you need Pegasus shoes. And you don't need the Pegasus boots because of speed. You need it because of, uh, you just need it for one little thing that invokes the glitch. But before we go down there, I'm going to show you this. And this goes down into that little, um, this area here from the beginning of the game. And, um, if you remember at the beginning of the game, we saw these, uh, bombable walls, but we didn't have bombs. So what could we do, right? Well, now we can go back down here and bomb the wall. And check this out. That's not what we came in here for. What we came in here for was this. Yes, 300 rupees. So it's a nice way to get some extra rupees if you need them. Um, also, the Chris Houlihan room uh, will give us some extra rupees too. 225, I believe. So, so that's nice. <laughs> take us back to the sanctuary and the sanctuary is a good starting point for the Chris Houlihan room so um, I tried to look up and I could find that there were from what I could tell like at least 16 maybe 18 ways of getting there and I didn't see any point of showing you every single method uh, so I just thought I'd show you the ways that you can get there and the reason I'm using the Pegasus boots here is just to save time you really don't need them until the last part of this so um, also, it doesn't really matter if you get hit or anything like that, because where it gets triggered is not around here, so I don't really care about getting hit. Now, a lot of people are mistaken in thinking that it's some sort of a time mechanism, like you have to get there in a certain period of time. You don't. Uh, one way of triggering it is going up in here, uh, press dash and go down, and then your XY position is um, in the wrong place, at least where I'm told. And then what you have to do is face south in one of these holes and bomb yourself in so you're still facing south when you land into the hole. And that's what triggers this one. Now, it's not every single hole, but it's it's some of them. Anyways, here's the Chris Houlihan room and, um, yeah, 225 rupees if you need them. We really don't, so. And you'll notice I'm back to the blue mail here. I did this earlier in the game. I figured it really didn't matter. As long as you've got the Pegasus boots, um, and maybe bombs, 
that's all you really need. So yeah, Chris Houlihan room. Um, I don't know what happened to Chris Houlihan, uh, but this came from a Nintendo Power contest in 1990. I think it was a Maniac Mansion ep uh, issue, where if you found the War Mech in Final Fantasy, which has like a 3 in 64 chance of... Um, you, you can find it like within a 3 in 64 chance uh, in the NES game at a certain location in Final Fantasy, then uh, you would find it, take a picture, send it in, and you would have... Uh, you would be entered to win a contest where you would be put into a Nintendo game, and Chris Houlihan won that, so, yeah. I don't know if they told him if it was a, this game or how you could get there, if they just left it to be discovered later or what, but, you know. Now the funny thing is, is once I unlocked how to get into it, I mean, it's just easy. You don't have to run like hell or anything like that, so... You know, any Let's Players that tell you you have to run, no. Pexus Boot's there are just to throw off your XY position when you go to another screen. And you'll see that a few times here. So the next uh, way to get to the Houlihan Room... Oh, and by the way, the Houlihan Room uh, will take you into a... Um... Well, when you exit it, you'll exit, Link, uh, exit at Link's house, so, you know. Now, another way to get to the Houlihan room is if you go south here, let me get rid of this guy here, um, and you bomb yourself towards the bottom, you'll be at the very bottom of the screen, then you Pegasus dash and hit down, just like that. And um, at this point, you don't need to do any running, you could take your sweet time, you could probably wait 10 or 20 minutes before you get to this hole. But you do need to at least go to the screens, because that'll keep your XY position off, as far as I'm aware. Um, and I think this is one of the main locations that people have found the Chris Houlihan room. And the other location being uh, that giant hole in the dark world, which I'm not going to show that location. But I figure, you know, I can show you at least several ways of getting there. So we go down this hole, we took our sweet time, no Pegasus boots really after a certain point. Well, actually, we really didn't need it for that. Well, no, we needed it for the sec first section, but we didn't need to run. So here's our Chris Hula hand room again. So, yeah, sorry if I'm confusing you there, viewers. You do need the Pegasus boots for this to work, obviously. So let's go to the Chris Hula hand room again in another way. Now, what you can do this way is, uh, let's see, let's go over here. And I'm going to just do the Pegasus boots to save a little bit of time. And what you want to do here is you want to get to a certain point where, um, well, you'll see in a moment. You go up to these trees north of this uh, screen here. You do a Pegasus dash and it'll push you all the way at the bottom. Then once you do that, the Chris Houlihan room is triggered. So now you just need to find a hole to fall into. Um, and sometimes you have to face south to go into the hole, sometimes you don't. Not really sure why that is the case, but there's a hole over here where I don't think you have to fall into it, facing south. So, yeah. I think maybe, I don't know what it is with this hole, but um, you have to approach it from the south, but you don't have to face south. So. And there's one other way to get to the Chris Houlihan room that I'm going to show you. So let's do that. So we're going to have to walk all the way back to the, uh, well, no, we're not going to have to walk all the way back there. Well, maybe we will. Yeah, we're going to have to go back to the sanctuary. So, yeah. But this method is probably one of the easier methods to do it, so I thought I'd show you this. It's very short, it only takes um, two or three screens. And this one should be one you should be able to replicate without a problem. What you do is you do the Pegasus dash and face down here. And you've triggered it. 